first up, we've got Matt Fraser. Okay, so I think this is during the 20K row in 2018. Okay, and you can sort of see here, sort of right at the start um, of the drive phase, the first thing he's doing uh, is lifting his body up straight away. His knees don't even move. Um, so ideally, you wouldn't do this. Your hips would move straight back straight away, um, keeping your shoulders in front of your hips. Um, almost like a deadlift, you know, you wouldn't sort of try and move your shoulders up first. You drive those hips up, keeping your shoulders uh, and arms connected to the bar. Um, it's the same here, um, and it's to feel slightly different. But you're driving those hips back, keeping your shoulders connected, but the body angle the same. So that's the first thing that Matt's doing a bit wrong. Um, and because of that, he hasn't really got anywhere to go when he gets to the end of the stroke to actually push his body through. So it's just all legs and not really making use of his back. He's just using his back to connect his arms to the handle. He actually gets his arms away really quite well. Um, but then coming over, he, want, he really needs to get that body over a bit more, trying to get the shoulders in front of the hips before coming up the slide. So he only really does that right at the very end of the stroke, whereas you want to be getting those shoulders into that shoulders over position much, much earlier. Um, but Matt actually goes on to actually improve his technique a little bit. So this is in 2020, I think during the 1K row. So you can see here his hips, there is actually some hip movement at the start. So his hips are, they're not leading things away because his body still is very much opening straight away, but it's better than it has been. Um, so some improvements there. Uh, and he's you know, hanging on to things well. He's what we call in the rowing world suspended, uh, which means the weight on the seat is really, really light. Um, so he's staying engaged through his body. And then you can see he comes down into his seat at the end. So losing that suspension as his arms bend, which is about right. Small tap down and away. And coming forward. And again, there's that lean in, but it is better. It is better than it has been. So you would just want to get that body over much sooner. Okay, you want that body coming over before those knees rise up too much. So you're in that catch position much earlier. You're not having to lunge for it right at the very end like Matt's doing here. But it's improving. Next up, we've got uh, Chandler Smith. So again, I think this is the same competition. So 2020, uh, 1K row for time um, and it's, this is almost kind of exaggerated on, on Matt's technique. So again, not getting the shoulders over at all, really. He's got, got that really prominent lean back, but you can see here really because of that, he's, it allows his seat to come right up to his heels, but he's still got loads of length to get at the catch. Um, so ideally you want your hand only sort of an inch away from touching the, called the cage, um, which is where it stops the handle from going too far forward. You only want to be an inch away from that. Um, but obviously there's a good amount of room there where Chandler can, is coming forwards. Again, first thing that it is doing is his upper body is opening. You really just want the hips to be moving back um, to, to engage. So that when your hands are coming just, sort of just before the knee, that's when your body your body's starting to open out. Whereas you can see here, Chandler's pretty much fully extended Okay, and it's just not a, a long, efficient drive. So it'd be amazing to see what these athletes could actually pull in terms of, of, the, of their splits when they were actually rowing, rowing well. Would be actually be really interesting to see. Next up, we've got Noah Olsen. Again, same competition. It's marginally better, at least sort of at the catch. He's got his shoulders in front of his hips. But it's still very much the same problem. Okay, so the shoulders open up straight away. Okay, he's got that lean back when you want to be keeping those hips, those shoulders from the hips for a much longer period of time. But slightly better. Not saying much, unfortunately. Okay, so next up we've got Jason Kalipa. Okay, so this is actually a little bit better. Okay, so you can see you've got nice straight arms at the catch. Okay, um, he does lead with the hips away. Um, there is still a bit of body opening, but he's actually got somewhere left to actually open out at the end of his stroke. So I know Jason is, was, was one of the better ones on the rower. 
why crossfitters have this sort of pause at the knee um i i, I don't know it drives me mental because it's just not efficient um you can spend that time getting that body over into a better position so that then you can row uh, longer and better um, throughout throughout the entire piece so i think he was pulling like sort of 152s for for a half marathon um which would be sort of for a professional rower a very sort of attainable uh something they do sort of day in day out um but for a world-class sort of athlete in jason who's doing a, a sort of all-out attempt um he could probably go a lot lot quicker um if he just sorted his technique out a bit more um in terms of his efficiency especially on the recovery you know the drive phase um is is quite good um it, it kind of looks tuggy at the finish, but actually he's just shoving his hips through really quite strongly. So you can see here, he's really accelerating his shoulders back, pushing the hips through with his arms still straight. And there's only a really small movement with the arms, which is almost kind of pulling him back onto his feet. I actually quite like that. I think that's quite good. Um, just needs to sort out his positioning and his recovery and he'd, he'd, be, he'd be flying, he'd be away. Um, so yeah, this is in the top right hand corner, you can see sort of Ben Smith here again with that pause. You know, I don't, I don't understand why crossfitters do it. I don't know if they're just so tight in their hips that they just need to ram themselves into the front um, to actually get some length. But if they can just get their hips over um, and get their shoulders in front of the hips on that recovery, they'd just be setting themselves up for a much longer, stronger stroke. Uh, and then here, demonstrated by Matt Fraser and uh, Pat Vellner. Again, that pause, just killer. Um, Brent, obviously a bit more flowing, uh, looks a little bit better, but he's leading right, right back as he's coming forwards. Um, so has this sort of dip into the finish, into the catch rather, um, which isn't ideal. Um, again, you just want to get the shoulders up in front of those hips earlier so you can get those hips driving back straight away um, on, that, on that drive phase. So this is probably one of the best examples of technique in CrossFit. Um, Alvar Alvarez, I think she won the half marathon, uh, a marathon row, sorry, in 2020. Um, so if you just don't look at what her arms are doing, um, she's obviously bending straight away at the catch, which is not ideal at all. Again, you, you wouldn't want to do a deadlift like this. You want nice straight arms connected through those shoulders. Um, and those, those arms just like chains, really. They just add the tension, but are still completely straight um, from that tension in the, in the shoulder. But if you look at what she's actually doing really, really well, so she is leading with those hips away on the, on the, on the drive phase, which is good. Uh, and then really pushing those hips through. And that, that sequence actually isn't too bad. Looks a little bit more built like a row. She looks like she's got longer, longer legs than some of the men that we watch. Um, but even so, uh, rowing a lot, lot better. And then here we've got uh, just a really good example of uh, sort of top technique. Um, so this is Hamish Bond, one of the world's greatest ever rowers, uh, undefeated in I think nearly 80 races may have been more uh, on the water, that is. Um, but here he is on the ergo. And you can see here leading away with the hips really, really well. Okay, so he's connecting. That body angle stays the same as he connects. And then as those hands get to the knee, his body is really opening out. And then he's finishing the stroke off with the arm. And then his arms are flowing away appropriately. And he's getting those shoulders in front of the hips nice and early on okay so by half slide which we call when the seat is halfway up the slide shoulders in front of the hips okay it's in that catch position there's no change he then comes forward and you can really push those hips away connect and then really push those hips through aggressively and then those arms again not doing too much just keeping you connected at the end of the stroke but again you can see here how well he drives because at the finish He's really pushing through his toes, okay? And he's not, he's not got, he's not pulling on his toes. He's pushing through his toes at the finish. So that's kind of the mark of someone who's really connected at the finish. Whereas if you see a lot of the crossfitters, 
you know, really pulling on their toes. Often the hand, the straps, often is coming loose. That's how sort of unconnected they are at the finish of the drive. Um, so feet out rowing can help with that a little bit, but actually just spending a bit of time, you know, CrossFit is actually, you know, not too bad at weightlifting. If they spent sort of five or 10% of the time um, that they do watching their snatch and clean and jerk, watching how they row and making those changes accordingly, um, they'll be able to make so much progress. You know, it's really low hanging fruit when it comes to making progress uh, in that area of your sport. So yeah, loads of, loads of area, well, only a few areas to sort of, of note that really improve and that's getting those shoulders in front of those hips on the recovery, leading with those hips on the drive and just not pausing being those kind of main points. So if you know that you're a culprit that's doing that, then you know, record yourself, see that you're doing it wrong um, and then start to make those changes. So once a week, um, I do a coaching call where I go through people's submissions in terms of their videos. Um, so if you want to get involved in that group, it's just in the description. I also get a uh, world-class athlete or coach uh, on the call once a month as well uh, to offer their feedback. Uh, it doesn't just have to be rowing videos, it can, can be anything, um, you know, power cleans, skier, wh whatever it might be. Um, and we'll offer you some feedback to, to help you improve uh, and answer any questions. Okay. Uh, I've also got some programs as well. Um, so if you're looking at trying to really focus on improving your fitness um, and using the Ergo as a tool to do that, we've, I have a PB or 2K, 5K and 30 minute rate 20. Um, all are really standardized programs in the rowing world um, and can be used probably uh, in, use in your box as well. Uh, so if you want to really get set a good PB, um, I think most of them are four to six weeks long. Um, so only a small sort of mini training block um, but we'll put you in a really, really strong position to get a PB. Um, and if you use the group as well to improve your technique, um, you'll be improving at, yeah, a huge rate, a huge rate. Okay, hope you enjoyed the video. Like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. Um, and yeah, see you on the next one.